Let me state a basic fact. A person's control over if and when to have a child leads to healthy adults, healthy children, and healthy families. But that is not the world we're about to live in because the extremists who got us here don't care about health. They care about control more than they care about our fundamental constitutional rights. In the face of this dark reality, I have three words, hold on to hope. Do not give up, do not give in to despair. It could get worse, and that means we've got to stick together. With the Supreme Court decision, we have reached a critical moment that has been a long time in the making. For decades, extremists have cultivated far-right judges and spent billions in dark money. And when that still wasn't enough, Republicans stole two seats on the Supreme Court, all to force their unpopular agenda on the rest of America. And what will they seek to control next? Further control of doctors by putting every OBGYN on a watch list? Further control of pregnant people by monitoring their location data and investigating miscarriages? Look, this is not theoretical. State legislatures are already competing to introduce the most extreme anti-abortion legislation they can. The level of control that the Republican Party wants over individual Americans is undemocratic and frankly, it is downright creepy. It is dire and our solidarity must reach across state lines because make no mistake, the Republican extremists are coming for all of us. Red states, purple states, blue states. Of course, if abortion is outlawed everywhere, women with means will still find ways about it. The impact will fall hardest on low-income women, people in rural areas, young women, women of colors, victim of incest and abuse, working moms. So where do we go from here? Well, if Mitch McConnell wins back control of the Senate, he has already threatened to pass a nationwide abortion ban. So let me be completely clear on this. Democrats must win. And in a post-Roe world, I've got a plan. One, elect pro-choice Democrats. Two, elect Democrats who will end the filibuster in the Senate. And three, expand the Supreme Court. Now, the Senate recently had a chance to pass the Women's Health Protection Act, which would have protected abortion rights nationwide. It failed, and frankly, it never had a chance because of the filibuster in place. The filibuster allows the minority to paralyze all progress. It is undemocratic. It is a relic developed by racist politicians to defend Jim Crow, and it's time for it to go. So I'm gonna be campaigning my heart out for Democrats like Mandela Barnes in Wisconsin, who has a great chance of unseating Republican Ron Johnson in November. I'll be out there for Charles Booker, who just won his primary in Kentucky, woohoo! And for Democrats like John Fetterman, who is running hard for the Senate in Pennsylvania. That's what we gotta do on the election front. Let's talk for a minute about the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is advancing an unpopular and partisan agenda. They're doing it on abortion and on a ton of other issues. Everything from sensible gun laws to labor and civil rights. The Supreme Court is pushing goals that contradict the Constitution and the basic rights of the American people. Now, court expansion is not something that is new or radical. The court size has been changed seven times in our nation's history. It is a small d democratic recalibration. And look, extremists are trying to send us back to the days when women had no control over their own bodies and their own futures. So if this feels like a personal attack, that's because it is. Many people today will feel scared and angry, but we do not give in to despair. I'm gonna be doing everything I can to make sure that we have more allies in this fight. Look, we have each other's back and we will take care of each other. That's who we are.